Again, Scheherazade must tell, a tale that would please the king very well. Could she change his heart of stone? For her very life was still on loan. Yes, he would let her tell once more a tale she had never told before. Then after that, who knows the end? The king's will might never bend. The story of Aladdin's lamp and how the magician tried to encamp the spirit of the genie within and how Aladdin with love did win is again a story of good and bad which was learned full well by this courageous lad. There once lived in China a poor tailor and his wife with their only son named Aladdin. The tailor worked day and night in order that his family might live, but his son was a lazy ne'er-do-well. However hard they tried to teach him to work, they failed. He would run away and waste his days with other ne'er-do-wells. His father died, leaving nothing but poverty. His mother spun for their food and shelter. Amid such poverty came a stranger who claimed to be Aladdin's uncle. I will take your son, dear sister-in-law, and teach him how to be a man, not a ne'er-do-well. My eternal thanks will be yours if you could perform such a miracle. Thus, Aladdin's uncle, who actually was an evil magician, took the boy, clothed him in beautiful clothes, and led him to the shop where he began to teach him to become a merchant. Finally, after spending much time together, the clever magician took Aladdin far into the country where they came upon a flat rock. It covered a hole in the ground, leading to a cave. Then the wicked magician coaxed Aladdin to go down into the hole, giving him exact instructions as to which passages he should follow in order to find a magic lamp. Aladdin did as he was bid, and while looking for the lamp, he came upon many beautiful jewels, which he hastily stuffed into his pockets. When he found the lamp, he returned to the opening. The magician called down to him, Give me the lamp first, then I will help you out. Well, Aladdin became suspicious of the intentions of the magician and feared that he might take the lamp and leave Aladdin down there. So he said, If you will help me out now, I will be able to give you the lamp more easily. No, give me the lamp first. Well, I have done all that you asked. Now I beg for help. You may stay there and perish if you do not give me the lamp. I will perish then. At this, the magician closed the opening with a heavy rock and disappeared, returning to Africa from whence he came. Meanwhile, Aladdin by chance rubbed the ring which the magician had given him when they first met. All of a sudden, a cloud of smoke appeared, turning itself into a genie. Your beard is my command. Oh, master, may Allah be praised. I am saved. Deliver me home. So began a new life for Aladdin, for he discovered the secret of the magic lamp. He had only to rub it and the genie of the lamp would appear to obey Aladdin's command. Aladdin and his mother ate well. They did not change their way of living, though the genie of the lamp could have done so for them but they lived happily and modestly. Till one day, Aladdin saw the Sultan's daughter and immediately fell in love. Oh, mother, I shall never be content till I wed the princess. Go to the palace, take with you these precious jewels, present them to the Sultan, and then beg for the princess hand in marriage. Oh, my son, this is but a mad dream. You, a poor man's son, you cannot marry a princess. I will have her. You shall see. Go now, mother, to the palace. So she went to the palace every day for three months before the Sultan finally spoke to her. She presented the jewels whose rarity and beauty overwhelmed the Sultan, and he promised to let his daughter wed Aladdin, should no one else be able to equal these jewels within three months' time. However, before three months had passed, the Sultan had forgotten his promise and he announced the engagement of his daughter to the wazir's son. 
Aladdin, saddened by this news, rubbed the lamp and again asked for help. That night, the genie of the lamp carried the princess and the wazir's son to Aladdin's home. The wazir's son was tied up and left outside in the cold, while the princess remained indoors. Both were returned to the palace in the morning. On the following night, the genie of the lamp again transported them to Aladdin's home. And by this time, the wazir's son was so shaken, he pleaded with his father. I pray you, father, let me give up the princess. I fear for my life. You must go through with it, for it will be a magnificent marriage. If I do, I'm afraid I will lose my life. So it was that the wazir's son left the palace, and the princess was free to marry another. Once again, Aladdin sent his mother to the palace with jewels far more beautiful than before. The Sultan remembered his promise and asked to see the intended bridegroom. If he be as magnificent as his jewels, he shall wed my daughter. Aladdin presented himself to the Sultan, but before doing so, he called upon the genie of the lamp. Dress me in the most magnificent clothes, O oh genie. Give me 40 slaves upon 40 white horses with platters filled with gold. I shall have a royal entrance to the palace. And he dressed his mother in robes so splendid that when the Sultan saw these riches, he consented immediately to the marriage. Everyone rejoiced. Then Aladdin built a palace for the princess, so luxurious that people came from far and wide to see it. They marveled that in one day such a palace could be built. The couple were happy for several years, and all went well, till one day the evil magician returned. Disguised as a merchant, he came about the palace, offering new lamps for old. Aladdin was away on a hunting trip and did not see him, but the princess found an old lamp, the magic lamp, and not knowing its secret powers, she gave it to the magician. Aha! Now at last the lamp is mine. So shall be the palace and the princess. In a moment the palace and the princess were in Africa with the magician. Aladdin, threatened with his life by the Sultan, and fearing for his beloved princess, was beside himself with grief. Alas, what can I do? As he thought sadly upon his plight, by accident he rubbed the magic ring the magician had given him so long ago. The genie appeared and offered help by carrying Aladdin to Africa, where the princess was held prisoner. Aladdin, Aladdin, at last you have come. We must rid ourselves of this evil magician. So we shall. I have a plan. When you dine with him tonight, put this poison in your wine. Then toast him, being very careful to exchange glasses to show your affection. And then all will be over. The princess followed the plan, and accordingly the magician drank the wine, which caused him to die. Aladdin found his lamp, and with the help of the genie, returned home to China, where everyone rejoiced to see the happy couple. And all remained well, and in time Aladdin became sultan, ruling with a hand of love, and never abusing his power, or that of the magic lamp. Oh, most noble of women, go on with your tales. I am enchanted by a queen who can speak to my heart. Oh, my king, if you are pleased with me, then save my life. Your life will I save and bless you forevermore. The king had listened. And the king had learned for a thousand and one nights, as Scheherazade had yearned. And when she had finished, he laid to rest all his evil decrees and thought only the best. His brother wed Deniazad. Happily ever after lived the king and Scheherazade.